Crack Key hydroponic systems are super simple to set up, but it actually has the most complex, ever-changing conditions within the root zone compared to any other hydroponics methods I know. If we are going to have success with our Crack Key systems, we need to learn to control the five key root zone parameters. Humidity, the air gap growth rate, the root growth rate, the water temperature, and light penetration. Let's talk hydroponics. There are lots of videos out there that compare the Cracky method with other hydroponics methods, like the deep water culture method, the nutrient film technique, or even beta bucket systems, and it's super interesting to see the results. Sometimes the Cracky method can be just as productive, or in some cases outperform the other methods despite not using any pumps to circulate water. And then other times the Cracky method crashes and burns. Why is that? When data shows huge successes and huge failures using the same growing method, it means we don't understand or are not controlling all the key variables. So let's explore how we can start controlling the root zone and then push the limits of what can be grown cracky style. Let's grow a blue thumb. The cracky method works by allowing a humid air zone to form as plants consume water, which allows the upper portion of the roots to develop fine root hairs that absorb oxygen. These fine root hairs depend on having a humid environment. This brings us to the first key root zone parameter, humidity. If the humid air zone becomes too dry, the roots will simply dry out and die. In order to control humidity, we need to control the air exchange within the humid air zone. This means we need to eliminate any leak paths that allow air to move too freely in and out of the reservoir. Gaps between the lids and the reservoir can often cause too much air exchange, as can the growing media and the net pot design. There will be much more air exchange if a coarse media like hydroton is used rather than something like cocoa core. If you're struggling with roots that are drying out, check to see if there are leak paths preventing you from controlling the humidity in the root zone. The next key root zone parameter is the air gap, or more specifically, how fast the air gap grows. The air gap growth rate is affected by the rate of transpiration as well as the container size and shape. There are many variables that affect the rate of transpiration, a couple of the primary ones being humidity and temperature within the growing environment. Different types of plants will also transpire at very different rates, which will affect how fast the air gap increases in the root zone. Tomatoes and cucumbers that consume a lot of water will cause the air gap to increase at a much faster rate than say a pepper plant that consumes water at a much slower rate. We can use the container size and shape to help control how fast that air gap grows. A larger reservoir will slow down the air gap growth rate and a smaller reservoir will speed it up. If your plants are struggling to get enough oxygen because the air gap is not being controlled, try adjusting your reservoir size and shape to match the transpiration rate of your plant within your specific growing environment. The next key root zone parameter is closely related to the air gap growth rate and that is the root growth rate. We don't have much control over the root growth rate with the exception of choosing the right kind of plant for our reservoir. Different plant types have very different root growth rates, and so we need to size our reservoir correctly to prevent the roots from having to chase a reseeding water line, or even worse, having plants with roots that grow so fast that 95% of the roots are submerged underwater, leaving a very small root mass within the humid air zone to absorb oxygen. The last two key root zone parameters are water temperature and light penetration. Any part of your reservoir that gives light access to your nutrient-rich water will result in algae growth. The algae will not only compete for nutrients, but I suspect will affect your root's ability to absorb nutrients. Controlling the water temperature in your reservoir is also important. We want to try and avoid large temperature swings within the root zone. However, there's some very interesting research about how water temperature may affect plant transpiration and thus nutrient absorption, so we will be sure to look into this research in the future. If this content is interesting to you, please hit that blue thumb like button, which helps us keep making improvements to our content in the future. If you want to know more about the crack key method, take a look at this introduction video that explains how the crack key system works. At Blue Thumb Designs, our aim is to share free information that can help people conserve water as they grow healthy food. Sometimes, in order to go green, we need to start thinking blue. We need to grow a blue thumb.